Welcome to Crosswords, the podcast about practical Christianity. What does it look like to walk in Jesus' footsteps? How do I live in a culture hostile to godliness? These are questions that we'll answer on each podcast as we get our heart and mind on Jesus. All scriptures quoted are from the New International Version. You can follow me on Twitter at Kingdom underscore Saint. Walk with the Lord today and be a blessing. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Definitely unprecedented times. Thank you so much, Brother Kevin, for the wonderful lesson and for the reminders for us. I'm honored to be able to speak to you and encourage you through this digital medium. And I want to thank the immensely talented family of the Long Island Church of Christ for their love of Jesus, for their love of his family, his church, to the many brothers and sisters that are making things happen behind the scenes so that we can worship together virtually and spiritually, of course. We have a world-class AV professionals that have been working tirelessly to make sure we can do this on this Zoom platform and at the same time transmit the feed to YouTube and Facebook. Our AV expert, Pat Jules, is making sure that the deaf community can join us by also broadcasting our ASL interpreters. These brothers and sisters and their families are working double time for us to experience this blessing. Uh, you can uh, change the slide, please. Now, I don't usually do current events, but unprecedented times call for an unprecedented message. So I want to give thanks to all the frontline workers as well, um, all the business owners, the grocery store workers, the first responders, the hospital staff, many in our congregation have these duties and many of our friends and family as well. So make sure you say thank you and show your gratitude to all of these who are continually exposed uh, to the threat, to the virus. But above all, we want to really thank God from whom we accept all things that happen to us, whether good or bad, because no matter what happens, we have hope. Just remember from Romans chapter 5, verse 5, hope does not disappoint. It does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Now, uh, I think that the slides might not be uh, working uh, right now, uh, but that's okay. We don't need slides. Uh, we can still <laughs> encourage each other through the message. You know, fluid times. We live in fluid times. We call them unprecedented times, but that's because they're so fluid. And these kind of fluid times where we don't know what's happening from one moment to the other at a worldwide level oftentimes cause panic. And when things are happening that fast, people tend to react together in what we call that herd effect, that herd mentality. Uh, it's not your fault. That's the way we tend to be designed. That's our biology, fight or flight, we call it, mainly caused by the hormone adrenaline. But feeding into that panic, feeding into that fear will undoubtedly produce rash, illogical, harmful, and sometimes selfish decisions. And we're not part of any kind of herd of animals. We belong to a different herd. Jesus called us out of the world to be his church. We can go to the slide uh, that uh, cites Matthew 16, verse 18. Uh, where here, Jesus says, on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of Hades shall not overcome it. We are the church of Jesus. Jesus says once he establishes his church, death could not prevail over it. Nothing man-made could prevail over the church. And we are his church. We are in his hands. But in fluid times, people do panic. And the Bible says Jesus came at just the right time. Did you know that during his last three years on earth, 
the times were also somewhat fluid. There were calls for rebellion against the Romans, false prophets popping up here and there, false messiahs. And Pontius Pilate was called uh, by the Romans to make sure that people stayed calm. Romans and Jews feared chaos was about to happen. Eventually it did around 70 AD when the armies of the general Titus invited Jerusalem and destroyed it along with God's temple. But before that happened, people's emotional state was heightened. And so I think I want to share the words Jesus used to encourage his disciples at that time, because we also live in times of high fluidity. We read here in Luke 17, verse 22 through 30, Then he said to his disciples, The time is coming when you will long to see one of the days of the Son of Man, but you will not see it. People will tell you, there he is, or here he is. Don't go running after them. For the Son of Man in his day will be like the lightning which flashes and lights up the sky from one end to the other. But first, he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. Next slide, please. We continue reading in verse 26. Just as it was in the days of Noah, so also it will be in the days of the Son of Man. People will be eating, drinking, marrying, being given in marriage up to the day Noah entered the ark. Then the flood came and destroyed them all. It was the same as in the days of Lot. People were eating and drinking, buying and selling, planting and building. But the day Lot left Sodom, fire and sulfur rained down from heaven and destroyed them all. It will be just like this on the day the Son of Man is revealed. So we see here that Jesus is saying, look, you know, when that day comes, many people say, oh, is, is the end times happening right now? Hey, Jesus says, when it happens, everybody's going to see the sign of the Son of Man as, as lightning flashes across the sky. It's going to be apparent. Until you see that, the end has not come. He says here, he gives us some clues. People are going to be acting normal, like if nothing is happening, just like in the days of Noah. Just like in the days of Lot, there are no signs necessarily preceding that day. Uh, one of the things that, or we could describe the things that are happening now or that have been happening that alarm some people. Next slide, please. Uh, as the birth pains, as we see here, Jesus describes them in Matthew 24, 3 to 8, where he says, as Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen? What will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Jesus answered, watch out that no one deceives you. Many will come in my name claiming I am the Messiah and will deceive many. Next slide, please. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Here's a call to deviate from the panic of the herd mentality. Jesus says here in the orange highlighted part, such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Then he says, he mentions some of the things that may happen. Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines, earthquakes in various places. He says all these, they're just the beginning of birth pains. The next slide, please. <clears throat> Many peoples across the world have endured frightful and fluid scenarios way before today. Such things leave people panic-stricken. People who live in war-torn countries, those who lack food and shelter, the basic necessities of life, those who endure bloody persecution by zealots, and I know many right now are enduring or have endured terrible times. I can only speak of what I personally know. So I'm going to bring up my family in Puerto Rico. Some there in that small island have been hit hard by recent earthquakes. And that region, region that was hit hard by earthquakes maybe was not hit as hard 
as other regions on the island that were devastated by the Hurricane Maria. But the whole island of Puerto Rico suffered the consequences of that hurricane, in particular my family, up to six months without power. That is unprecedented. For them, these past few years, really these last two years, have been one disaster after the other. They had Hurricane Maria. They had humongous earthquakes, such as no one in Puerto Rico had ever seen. Now they're going through this pandemic with us all. Many surely think that they are in the end times. And you add to that any extra things individuals are carrying along from everyday life, like my mom, who's been battling cancer for the last four years. I mean, talk about the multiple levels of stress for sure. God is moving our cheese in many different ways. Next slide, please. Now, throughout all of this, we really need to keep Job's perspective. We know Job endured some unprecedented times, and yet his answer to these things was, shall we accept good from God and not trouble? Now, this, this is a really challenging statement, isn't it? We don't want to be like his wife. Uh, if we take that whole statement, Job 2.10, uh, it says, because his wife was kind of complaining. She was saying, oh, curse God and die already. I mean, haven't you had enough? Look at what's going on. And he says to her, you're talking like a foolish woman. Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? And so that is a true test of faith. Many are like Job's wife. Many speak and move with an underlying sense of morbidity and hopelessness, kind of like with a dark cloud hanging over their heads. Perhaps some of you are feeling that way right now. Recall 9-11. Many of you were probably feeling that at the time. I know I was, and I was in Puerto Rico. I was almost 4,000 miles away. Yet, because a large part of my family was in New York, I was feeling it. But you know what? That passed. Yes, it left the mark. It changed us in many ways, but I believe it made us better, particularly if we learn to hope and if we learn to lean on God. The Bible says these three remain, faith, hope, and love. Without these three, your heart, your mind is going to turn to hopelessness, to, to panic, to fear, to despair. You know, Isaiah and Jeremiah, they lived during fluid times. When these emotional states ruled the hearts of the people. And that's why uh, God said through Isaiah here in Isaiah 8, 11 through 13, this is what the Lord says to me with his strong hand upon me, warning me not to follow the way of these people. Don't call conspiracy everything this people calls a conspiracy. Don't fear what they fear. Don't dread it. The Lord Almighty is the one you are to regard as holy. He is the one you are to fear. He is the one you are to dread. Whew, sober words for all of us right now. Just remember, you're in the world, but you're not of the world. Now, that doesn't give us license to defy our government or to act in our own selfish way, going to the stores, trying to hoard things. You know, calling it our right to religious belief to do that, that's absurd. And it's not just childish, but it's unholy. We're to distinguish ourselves by faith, by hope, by love, by deeds done in humility, giving people language and hope, behaviors that can help people see and understand there is a God and he rules in our midst. You are part of God's people. And his church will not be overcome by any plan of man or any disaster. This is the encouragement in Isaiah 41, 8 through 10. You, Israel, my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen. You descendants of Abraham, my friend. He's talking to you. You who put your faith in God. I took you from the ends of the earth. From its farthest corners, I've called you. I said, you are my servant. I have chosen you and have not rejected you. So don't fear. I am with you. Don't be dismayed. I'm your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. 
I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. These are not empty words, brothers and sisters and friends. This is our mighty God. Nothing is impossible for him. Like Jesus says, on this rock, what is the rock? Jesus is Lord. Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is the Messiah. He's the Savior. That's the rock. And on that rock, he built his church. And the gates of Hades, the gates of death, will not overcome. You are poised to receive an inheritance as the church of Jesus. An inheritance that will never perish, spoil, or fade. And our role at any time or in any space is to help people see Jesus. This is what we've written on our homepage. You go to our homepage, licoc.org, and you read those words there, and you will see that's our statement. We want to help people see Jesus. You believe Jesus is in you? You will show Jesus. This is what God has ordained the church to do. And so God is shaking the earth. Yeah, he's shook it various times through this pandemic. He's shaking people again, as we read here in Hebrews 12, 26 through 29. He has promised once more, I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. That's the shaking that's coming. The words once more indicate the removing of what can be shaken. That is the created things. So that what cannot be shaken may remain. And that's what we're a part of, this kingdom. Therefore, since we are receiving, present tense, a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful. And so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. I want to pray, brothers and sisters, right now before I give the invitation. Please join me in prayer. Father in heaven, we are certainly part of an unshakable kingdom. And we are humbled to be a part of that. We are humbled that you've called us from every corner of the earth to be part of something that we don't deserve because we've all been bitten by the worst pandemic, and that is the pandemic of sin that has infected everybody, like our brother said, 100% mortality, no known cure. But you gave us the blood of Jesus that cleanses all. And so our hope is not in this world, but our hope is in what cannot be shaken, and that is your kingdom, Lord. And we're so thankful. We want to be thankful, not complaining. We want to follow that example of Job, accepting bad and good, knowing that you're working this out for the benefit of those who listen to your word. Help us find our task, our role as part of your church to lead others to you. I pray for those who are sick right now, Lord, whether it is from the virus or whether it is some other sickness. I know your mighty hand can heal them thoroughly and completely. You've given wisdom to doctors, but you yourself only hold the key to healing. I want to pray and lift up those who have anxiety or panic because they've lost their jobs. They don't know where the next source of income or food may come from. <clears throat> I pray that they may look to you, Father, that they may lean on you and call out to you because you give us real answers. I pray that in you our anxiety is gone and that peace replaces it. The peace that surpasses all understanding that comes from Jesus Christ. I pray that if any one of us are afraid, that we may re redirect that fear to you, for we are to dread you and no one else. I want to say a prayer and uplift those who are facing this invisible threat in the front lines every day in hospitals as first responders. I pray you strengthen them, cover them, help them, direct them to you. You are in control and we are in your hands as your church. By the powerful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Brothers, sisters, and friends. Amen. We know we're here to teach and preach the gospel. That's our role. And so I want to 
remind you of the gospel, as Paul says, and as we read in the scriptures time and time again, that Jesus did die already 2,000 years ago to cover us from the worst thing ever, and that is sin, which is 100% mortal. He died. He gave up his body as a sacrifice so that we now can live, and not just live in these bodies, because we've surrendered these bodies now to live for Christ. And he was raised from the dead to show us that the hope is real. These are not just words we say, as real as the threat and the anxiety that you may be feeling right now. The resurrection is even more real, and that we can bank on. Next slide, please. How do we get into this gospel? Well, we are baptized into the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 6, verse 4 through 6 or 4 through 7, teaches that when we are baptized into Christ, we die with Christ. So that now we said goodbye to this body, to this life, to this world, even though we're still living in it, we're not of it anymore. We put to the side. And so now we're covered with the righteousness of Christ. And now we can practice the self-control, being new creatures, raised to newness of life, as Romans 6, 4 says. Because those who have died now can live for Christ Jesus. And yes, even though we live in the world and we have to still operate and do things in the world, and sometimes that causes grief or anxiety, but we have the Lord God who sustains us with his righteous right hand. I pray, brothers and sisters, that if any of you have any prayers that you would like to submit, we are here praying for you. If there are any doubts that you may have, we're here to help you overcome those doubts. Please surrender your prayer requests. You can send them to info at licoc.org. Those of you who are our members, you can log your prayer request at LI Church Space. And if any of you would like some words of encouragement, I am always available. You can reach me at uh, my email, kingdomsaint at gmail.com. Those of you who know my text can text me straight. I pray, brothers and sisters, that we focus on the hope that does not disappoint because God is with us. Have a good afternoon. God bless you. Thank you very much for listening. I hope the Lord gave you insight into conforming to Jesus with today's message. I always appreciate feedback. You can send me your thoughts, musings, and comments directly through the Anchor app. You can also contact me on Twitter at kingdom underscore saint. Walk with the Lord today and be a blessing.